Hello, welcome to another video. Today we're looking at various Apple networking protocols. The first one we have here is an Apple Talk connector. So this would plug into the back of a older Macintosh computer and it would split out to these two connectors. And uh, it was pretty slow. It was only about 250 kilobits per second. Not even usable today, but at least it did very easily and very inexpensively allow networking between computers. All you had to do was plug this into the back of the computer and then you would use one of these kind of strange cables here. They have three pins and then a little plastic header in there. Uh, you'd connect one of these from here to here and if I can connect it, plug one of those in there and then you get another Apple Talk box and you can just plug that in and then you're networked. So it would be as simple as that. Then the configuration was all kind of taken care of for you and it used very, very little network resources. Uh, but these were very slow and they didn't really give you too much bandwidth. And at the time, a lot of network used something called BNC connectors. So that's this style connector right here. So you'd have a T adapter like this. This would go onto your network card. And then this was a terminator. You connect that on there and then you'd have another BNC connector here that would go off to your next computer. So it was a uh, a ring based system and then you need to have a terminator on these because uh, if you left it open ended you would get uh, weird effects um, and these could run up to uh, 10 base T so 10 megabits per second on those networks uh, more common and still used to this day is the ethernet connection and a 10 base T connection and so this uses the typical RJ45 connector and we can see here I have an Apple adapter um, that was developed in the early 1990s. And this is an AAUI, Apple Attached Unit Interface, which is some strange, weird, proprietary Apple connector. Um, I tried looking up information on this thing. I couldn't find anything. Um, if you do have some information on this, like where to actually buy this part, leave it in the comments down below. See if they're still available. And on the other side, you get your typical Ethernet connection. So that, you know, just pops in just like normal. And that would give you 10 base T networking, which was uh, pretty popular at the, uh, or becoming more popular at the time and now is just commonplace. So this could still be used today to network um, an older Macintosh system. So I was thinking I'd, uh, cut into some of these and see what's going on inside of them. So I was going to take a look at the wire first. Um, I'm going to crack this open and see. So one of the advantages of the system is it's supposed to be just a three core wire. So by eliminating some of the wires, they eliminated some cost. And uh, yeah, looks like there might just be a Not easy to strip. Oh yeah, it's got a braided shield. Then we got a plastic wrap. And then it looks like they have some fiber. This is just paper uh, cloth fill in there. And then just a single twisted pair. So you have two data lines, two wires, and then the, uh, the shield on the outside, which is the, the earth effectively. So a fairly high quality wire. Fairly high strand count, and uh, but yeah, I'm saying less cores, so it was actually less expensive. And an Ethernet cable, by comparison, doesn't have any. Well, most Ethernet cable doesn't have shielding. The really high bandwidth stuff does have shielding, so like Cat7 things like that. But this basic uh, Cat5e cable is just eight wires and four twisted pairs, just kind of shoved in there. Um, so it's very inexpensive to make this wire, whereas this one with a braided shield and, uh, you know, carefully twisted cables and everything uh, is actually fairly expensive to make. So having this be a RS-422 interface with two twisted pairs and all that kind of stuff gets uh, very expensive. So this was a very inexpensive way to go at the time. So now... The connection to the computer had quite a few more ports, pins. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pins here uh, in this connector. 
I'm just curious if the wire here actually had more cores or if it was just the same basic setup. Looks like we got paper. There's no plastic on this one, so this is a different wire. All right, there we go. So in this one we have four physical conductors. So it's definitely doing something inside there. So we have four physical conductors here and our shield. And then we have a box with two connectors. You can hear circuit board rattling around in there. So we're going to open this up and see what's inside. So that's a little different. Still have our braid shield, but we have four conductors. I'm not sure the best way to get into this. So I've got a screwdriver here. We can just kind of crack it open. Well, that was easy. And there we have it. So our cable comes in. The We have one, two, three, four. We actually have five wires here. You can see our colors over here. So there's a black wire labeled ground. So that's connected in the shield. It's going to be uh, connected underneath this heat shrink. Looks like we have a transformer. That's a part number 1570049-C, Token Japan. Looks like that was made in the 43rd week of 1990. So that gives us an age of about 30 years. Uh, Single-sided PCB. Looks like it's actually, uh, it's got some coating on it. So I'm going to do a quick uh, reverse engineer and I'll be right back. All right, and here it is. So this is our little connector and this is the circuitry that's inside of it. So first thing we have our shield comes through, it goes through a 0.1 microfarad and a 1K ohm resistor. That comes in, that connects to the shield on the transformer. And then that uh, connects to the center tap on this output transformer over here. And that also connects over to the shield on the two output connectors. So there is some limiting uh, connection back to like, you know, earth reference of the computer itself. And then the four cables coming in, uh, two of them are really in parallel with each other, but they go through a 1K ohm resistor. So the white and the green are connected together, and then the blue and the red are connected together, but they have a 1K ohm resistor in here uh, between the, the two of them. And then those connect into a transformer, and only two of the connections are there. The center tap on that transformer is not connected to anything. And then on the output side of that transformer, the center tap, like I say, is earthed, and then the two output wires come through. They connect across a 100 ohm resistor on the circuit board, so that's some kind of matching to prevent, you know, bounce back or anything like that. And then the, the two connectors are just, just in parallel with each other across that output. Uh, so that's about it. So that's how they're doing their, their conversion. And these little adapters were actually quite expensive, but probably really cost, you know, a dollar to make or so. So that's it for the Apple Talk system. Let's take a look at the Asante Friendly Net. Uh, as far as I can tell, Asante's still around, but they look like they're like a smart device type company now. Um, this really strange 14 pin connector. Uh, this thing could pass, could pass 12 volts and five volt power. Uh, this might not have used both of those things, but it, it could do it. Uh, yeah, let's crack it open. I'd say for repairability, this one gets a 0 out of 10. Of course, as I do that, I clip the other side in. Got it! Yeah, it's free. Okay, so... Looks like we got multi levels of shielding on this thing. So this has top and bottom shield. It's got an aluminum face piece for shielding. We clearly have a metal crimped connector in here, so that's shielding. Looks like our cable has uh, 10 wires. So it looks like all the spots are used. Yeah, so a 10 wire cable coming in. And no components on the back. It looks like these two are probably our data lines. Looks like we got four lines coming in. It looks like we may have more on the top actually. So maybe eight wires for data lines. 
or maybe a couple clock lines and then some other data lines. We got the infamous tag tantalum capacitors. That one says uh, 4710. So I'm guessing that's uh, 47 microfarads and 10 volts. Same on this one. And then over here we have some ceramic discs. Uh, that's a 1 kV job there. Looks like there's another uh, spot for a connector here. So I wonder if that was for yeah, with a 1 kV. I wonder if this is for a modem. So for a dial-up modem. Yeah, so we'll go over to a card right here. So this actually was a multi-purpose PCB, so this could support uh, both Ethernet and uh, modem connection. Uh, so we have a crystal. That's going to be for our Ethernet. It's a 20 megahertz crystal. The chip itself is a DM9095L, and that looks like quite a bit newer. 25th week, 1999. Same thing, 4th week, 99. So this thing's from almost the year 2000, so this thing's actually fairly new in terms of this technology yeah the pcb is 22nd week 99 that's crazy this is way newer than i thought it was and then we have our uh ethernet transformer there so we have two sets of isolation really you have an isolation data isolation here and then also here for the output side and then just some support passives running around the various areas there a couple leds so this was ethernet networking uh for the early 90s max and i guess up to around the year 2000 which is kind of surprising but overall yeah this is actually pretty pretty neat with the both metalized plastic another layer of shielding that shielding connecting through to a metal on the shield of the cable going through see that just connects straight through on this one there's no uh, no resistance between these so these these uh output metal case here is actually all referenced right back to the earth and this i'm assuming has some points where it will touch yeah so you see this is this little bend up right here that's actually going to push in when it's installed on this this bare section right here so that makes sure and it's got two more over here so that makes sure that this thing is uh this shielding is solidly connected to the the ground connection of this board thanks for watching like and subscribe